Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask that you turn to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 35. Uh, while you're turning there, I would ask that uh, uh, we remember our sister churches uh, as we pray. Uh, the uh, devil has set his eyeball on the Lord's churches. And uh, you hear more and more, especially young people, uh, departing from the faith. And we need to remember that. Isaiah 35, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Isaiah 35, in the first verse, the Bible says, The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall re rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a re recompense. He will come and save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as the heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for the wilderness shall uh, in the wilderness, for in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool. And the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where they lay, shall be grass and reeds and rushes. And an Almighty shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your dear and precious book. Lord, we pray that we may never uh, concede to popularity, but that we would stand for this book, uh, for the book that you created for the English-speaking people, that we would defend it. Uh, God, we pray this morning that you would bless these words to the hearts of the hearers, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, somewhat a familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, I uh, have had this Bible uh, for almost 15 years, and I always mark when I hear a Scripture preached on, and I have never personally heard it preached on. I have not had it marked. I don't have a brother's name beside it. And so that means I haven't personally heard it heard it preach, but you have, because I've preached from this section before. Uh, but the difference about, and a lot of times you'll hear more of the beginning of Isaiah preached, because it begins with the condemnation of Israel. It, it begins with a warning that Israel is going to be taken captive, and that the hand of God is going to be moved away, and his protection would be no more. And a lot of people preach on that because no doubt in our modern day we're seeing the very same things that happened to Jerusalem and to Israel happen to the Lord's church. And so it's used very frequently. Now this is a little bit further over from that. And he begins to say specifically the new place is going to be in the desert. Now, we're very fearful today that the churches, uh, the Lord's churches are going to go away. Dear friend, I can assure you there will always be a sound church somewhere, someplace, because he's made that commitment. On this church, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So that's a promise we can keep on, and don't stress about that. But it's never promised that it'll be an easy trip. Uh, it's never promised that some churches will go out of existence. Mm -hmm. Now, we think, you know, we, when we say mama, we think about our own mamas, right? 
But you know, uh, mama is an office. Mine's gone. She no longer feels, fulfills that office because the, she's gone. But mama still means the same thing to everybody in this room, right? So the office is there, and the church will always be there, but it not, may, may not be specifically where you're used to going. And if that's how it is, that's okay. But the very same situation with Israel occurred. Now, were there going to be national Israel? You betcha. Was it going to be in the same place? Probably not. Now, we know in of ourselves there was no Israel for 2,000 years on the face of this earth, right? As part of the peace treaty that ended World War II, uh, the U.S. was the one said that specifically there would be a land for Israel. There would be, again, a land for the Jews. That was part of the peace treaty, and it did come to pass. Did that mean was Israel out of existence? No, there was Jews all over the face of the earth. In fact, after they became a nation, they flocked back there and, and, and began the traditions once again. And, and so we find the very same promise is given to the Lord's people, but it may or may not be in the place that it is now. Now, with, with that said, is First Baptist Jerusalem still in existence? No. The church that the Lord himself started, that group does not exist anymore. But does the Lord's church exist? You betcha. There are, there are hundreds of strong Baptist churches over the world, even still today. But they're in different locations. So as Isaiah begins to teach this, he says, you're going to a desert. You're going to a different place. You're not going to be in the spot that you are now, but there is a way to get there. There is a highway to find. Now, we're going to read more about this highway in a minute when we get down there toward the end, but man's ideas of highways are imperfect. Did you know that? If you haven't, go into Nashville and when you find 24, 65, and 40 coming together in a mile of each other, you'll know that man's idea of building a highway and God's idea of building a highway are two different things. Ours is corrupted by our limited intelligence and his is, only, and his is always good and right. Uh, highway 79, we have two state, three state highways in our tiny county, the biggest one, 79. And as a boy, I never could understand this because all through Stewart County, 70 run, 79 runs east to west. When you go east, you're facing the sun in the morning because I used to do it all the time driving into Clarksville. And, and when you're going to Paris, you're headed west. But did you know that if you look at a map, 79 runs north to south? Now, what kind of sense does that make, right? And you know it don't turn back north until you get downtown Clarksville in the old part of town. It'll turn back north and you'll go up by the mall. And then it, it gets right again. And if you go, if, it, it, and when you get to Paris, that first or that third light, if you turn left, it goes south again. So there's places that don't even make sense. The road's not going in the right direction. But God's always does. He never has the problem that mankind has. His road is right and good. So as Isaiah is writing to the nation of, uh, of Israel, he gives them some hope. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them meaning the survivors, meaning the ones that remain true, meaning the ones that are faithful unto God. This solitary, long, solitary means by yourself. It means alone. It means nobody else is there. That lonely place is going to be good for us. The place where Israel will find itself is going to be good. And wherever we find ourselves in the modern day, if we're in the will of God, if we have followed the road, it's good. 
But we find a we find a, a truth here that no one likes. It may be a solitary place. You may not have been, you may not have 50 or 60 people there. You, it may be a lonely spot. And the Bible says, the desert shall rejoice. So we find that it's going to be a lonely place. And we find it's going to be in a desert. Now, I have never been really in a desert. I've seen one from the plane, and I knew enough then I never wanted to be in one. Uh, I went from uh, uh, Washington State, uh, I was seeing Matthew one time, and went down in my flight. If you buy cheap plane tickets, you're going to go all over the country to get back to Tennessee. And I went to Phoenix, Arizona, and all across the state of Arizona, there was nothing but desert. Miles and miles. I mean, you're, you're traveling 500 miles an hour. And for two hours, I looked down and saw nothing but desert. That's a thousand miles of desert. It's a solitary place. And God said, Israel, I'm going to put you there. I'm going to put you in the desert. So, so far, we're alone, and we're in the desert. We're in a, uh, a, it is not a wonderful thing to think about. It says, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Now, you know what? Sometimes it's hard to believe that one day we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ one day the rose will blossom. One day we will forevermore be at the feet of Christ. That is the blossoming, blossoming desert. And it's a promise. It's a hard promise to believe. Now, as I was flying over all those miles upon miles upon miles of desert, there was nothing. Then I noticed as we were getting... I guess if you can say close in a plane ride, probably two or three hundred miles still out in the desert, I started seeing big circles of grass. You know what? It was an artificially watered place. And when they watered it, guess what? Grass did come up. There were cornfields that were just a big circle, and being a redneck, I often wondered, I said, I wonder how they plow back. Because it was just a big, a big circle. I'm like, that's going to be hard to tend to. But anyway, there was corn out there. And you know why? Because there was water. There was something blossoming in the desert. And as we go through this life, listen, there's going to be blossoms in the desert. Is it going to be hard? You betcha. Is it going to be hot? Absolutely. Is it going to be dry? Most of the time. <laughs> But there is blossoms here and there. And that was Isaiah's promise to the dislocated, the dispersed Israel, that they would have something. And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy. Now, in the first part of the second verse, he says, when you get there, rejoice. How many people you see rejoicing today? Zero, maybe? Nada? That's none in Spanish, right, Justin? You ever thought, wonder why that is among God's people? Because we're looking right here. Woe is me. And another thing I think it is, when we see a little blossom, we disregard it or question it. That ain't a flower. That won't last as long as a June cross. Right? You know what? When you begin to doubt God and when you begin to ignore his blessings, you're going to see less and less and less of them. Why? Because you didn't honor the ones you did see. You didn't praise God for it. And, and so he, he, when we have these times, our response, and even the, you see here the response of the blessings was to give glory and honor. It, and so we're to rejoice even with joy and singing. 
the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. Now, the glory of Lebanon, it was a huge city. It was one of God's places. And he's removing the glory from that place and giving it to a desert. You know what? When the Gentiles became God's people, he accomplished that. He took and put Lebanon, the very greatest, in the hands of the Gentiles, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, it's coming. The desert is rough. I will grant you that. But there are blessings there. Most of the time, the problem is, is we don't see them or we ignore them. And sometimes I think it's both. Strengthen ye the weak hands. Now, he begins on this, this uh, routine of exercise and that is what we have to do is we have to strengthen the weak. Mm -hmm. How do you do that in a world that is literally falling apart around us? You point out the good. Do we have a weak president right now? You betcha. I actually feel sorry for the man, and I sincerely mean that. I've taken care of men like him my entire life. I feel sorry for the man. That man needs to be strengthened. But you know what makes me more sorry than looking at President Biden? Looking at Christians that are ready to throw in the towel. They need strengthening. Listen, church, this is not the time to quit. It is not the time. And, and you know what? So when something glorious happens, go back and tell your people. My son is called to the ministry. I don't know what God has planned for Matthew, but I know that he has something glorious planned. And you know what? There's a 30-year-old boy ready to serve Christ come what may. That's a red, you know what? That's a flower in the desert, isn't it? My nephew, Bryce, same thing. Yes, listen, you, you know, that is three young men very recently that has been called into the gospel ministry. You know what? That's a time to rejoice. But you know what God's people do? They look on uh, Fox News like, well, nothing left we can do. Turn your TV off. That's right, amen. And uh, so we see then, as the Lord's people, we're just like Israel was. We're going through a desert. Say unto them, verse 4, Say unto them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. You know, when the storm comes, church, what's going to happen? Exactly what God ordained it to. Nothing outside His holy will. What could be better? You know what? I live in a double wide trailer. <laughs> Used to, I get a little fearful of storms. That old barn that was on our place uh, down toward the neighbor's house, you know what brought it to the ground? A tornado. Came right up the holler and ripped all the way going. Am I afraid? No. God not only knows about tornadoes, he sets their path. So why am I to be afraid? Why, why am I to be upset? And, and so he, uh, he tells it, uh, Israel, or he tells the strong in Israel to remind the weak in Israel that this is God's plan. This is how it ought to be. God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense or a buyback or a payment. You know what? There's a payment for sin. Amen. Now, thank God the penalty of sin, and I believe a recompense and a penalty are two different things. Penalty, you know what the penalty of sin is, Jarrett? I know you do. Yeah. It's death. Yeah. Now, is this old flesh going to go away? You betcha. I, I, I'll die in that penalty. But see, my spirit will live forever and ever and ever and ever. And you know what? You that are lost, 
Your spirit will die forever, and it will die forever, and forever, and forever, and forever, you will die. That's a scary thought, isn't it? And so we see that, that portion of it, but then we find that this is a recompense. You know what that is? That's money that's buying something. Actually, it's buying back something. You know, Brother Junior's got a pretty nice Bible. I bet his children buy him that. <laughs> Can I buy it back? Now, I know he wouldn't let me. But you see what I'm saying? If me and Donna and her brothers had it one time and we give it to him, who owned it first? Now, if I wanted that, it would be a buyback. See, our sins, whether we like to embrace this, and Baptists don't. Us, our sins in the flesh, there is a recompense for them. In other words, if I do something, there's always a result from it, right? If I do good, there's something from it. If I do evil, there's something from it. And you know what? Young people, remember this. Most of the time, it's through your children. And that's a very, very scary thought. And, and, and so we see that as he's promising Israel these things in the desert that he said you will pay for what has happened here. Verse 5, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Now, we do not save ourselves because in this flesh we can neither hear Christ nor can we see Christ in this flesh. We have to be opened up and see our dreadfulness of sin and see the marvelous answer in Christ. That must happen. And so he makes a promise of Israel along the very same lines. You know why sometimes we don't see the blessing? You know what, when I did this, I can't even recognize my mother law Sometimes we take our spiritual glasses off, don't we? I can't see nothing without my glasses. I can't even read without my glasses. You know what? If you're saved, put your glasses back on. Be able to see. There's blessings around us even right now. Amen. And, and, and we, don't, we don't need to let the devil blind us to a time of rejoicing and make it into a time of misery. We don't need to do that. We need to be unstuffed. We need our eyes open. Then shall the lame man leave as a heart, and that heart is a deer. Now, uh, if you live in Stewart County, our visitors, listen, uh, you come, keep coming, Stephen, Jarrett and Herod, I mean, Jarrett and Hannah, and you're going to hit a deer. You will hit a deer. Sorry, Hannah, Herod. <laughs> Uh, you'll hit a deer. You know why? Because you don't drive through Stewart County, Tennessee, and not hit a deer. Mm -hmm. If you're here long enough, you will hit one. And you know what? Sometimes they'll leap right out in front of you. Deers are not the smartest creatures. The only thing I found dumber than a deer is a possum. A possum literally would just sit there while you boom, boom. And uh, goodbye possum, right? Deers is the next dumbest. They will actually walk out in front of you. And mess up the front end of your car and the deer's dead and uh, you got a mess on your hand. But they can leap, can't they? Very few, uh, every once in a while, I see them leap in front of me, touch down just for a moment and leap again to safety. We can leap that way if we want to. But you know what I found with, uh, with people today? They don't have enough energy to leave. Yeah. And, and you know what brings your energy down? Two things, right? Sickness and not eating enough. And then on the eating side, not eating the right things. You know what? Potato chips ain't going to make us ready to go hold a bath, is it? 
Now, are they good? You betcha. I love potato chips. But I need to go with something more substantial if I'm going to hold back. And if I'm going to go live in the desert, and that was the assignment of Israel, you are going to a desert place. You better have something good on board. That book in your lap is, is what you need. Listen, uh, Spurgeon is fine. Pink is fine. All those men, listen, I know they're a lot better educated than this country preacher. preacher but you know what they need? What we need? This is our food. This is our diet. You want to leap like a deer? Get in this book and you'll leap like a deer. Verse, uh, uh, verse 7. And the parched ground shall become a pool. That's a promise. Are you parched this morning? Are you dry? Are you ready to quit? You know what? You have the ability to become a pool. Full of water. A cool place. You know what? When you're in the desert and you see an oasis, people flock to it. It's a pool. It's a place to be nourished. It's a place to get cold water. It's a place where vegetables grow. The parched ground shall become a pool. And the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons. Now, I've heard a lot of different... Uh, input and philosophy on this dragons. Uh, some say they were dinosaurs. Some say they were real. Like what we think of as a mystical dragon. What I have learned with the Bible, if the Bible says it, it's probably just like it says. It probably were dragons in that day. I don't have any issue at all believing in it. I don't have an issue believing with unicorns because the Bible says there were unicorns. And people do two things. They accept it at face value, which I do, or they, or they try to pick out another animal that was similar like the dinosaurs. Either way, you know what? In this place that he is created, he says, listen, Israel, there's dragons there. Now, whether dragons are dragons and snorts fire, or whether dragons are, are, are uh, dinosaurs, you know what? I don't want to meet up with one. I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I ain't going to take on a dragon or a dinosaur. It scares me to think about it. But he said, those type of things are in the desert. <laughs> The place that I created for you, the place where you're going to be nourished, there's risk. We don't much think about that, do we? No. You know what? Wherever that dragon is, I'm going to be wary of him, but if God wants me in that spot, that's where I'm going to be. And if the dragon comes running, the only thing I know to do is run to the cave, get where he can't get me, right? But I still want to be in the will of God. And we find in this place, if we want to be where we're going to be nurtured, there are risks involved. Verse 18. I mean, excuse me, verse 8. And a highway shall be there and way. What rich comfort. There's a highway. And there is a way. You know what? I like highways, don't you? Now, there are some state roads, I think is what they call them, in, in Stewart County, too. What they call the Cumberland City Road is, Eric will know, 231 or something like that. And then all the way around on Parish Road, I think it's 232 or 233, and it goes all the way around and comes out way down in Stewart, Tennessee. And that road is just like this. Uh, Desmond's, da I mean, excuse me, Sarah's daddy told me that him and Will, he asked me one time, where's 232? And I said, well, I said, it depends on which end of it that you're talking about. 
And he goes, me and uh, Will want to ride on it on our bikes. And I said, well, good luck to you. Because it's like this. And that's why bikers who are big bikers, they like that because all you do is lean that bike like this back and forth. And the whole, it's like 26 miles of it. Now, if that's what they want to do, more power to them. Now, I've scraped enough people up off the road that I ain't going to do it. But uh, I want you to see a highway isn't always easy. Now, we have a good highway in Stewart County now, but I remember when it was a lot different, don't you? I remember when it was two lanes all the way to Clarksville, and if you got behind an old woman getting her groceries for the week, you were just 30 miles an hour all the way to Clarksville. And you might as well just sit back because there wasn't no getting around her. Now we have four lanes, two lanes both ways, turning lane at most side roads, so we can just go boom, and the woman that's getting her groceries won't even be a bother to you anymore. Now, what most people don't know, the 374 bypass over to the mall, that's not 79 highway. That's the 374 bypass. Is it quicker? Yes. Is it staying on 79? No. 79 goes to the end where you get there on New Providence Boulevard, which really is 79. It's 41 and 79 run consecutively for there for a minute. And you turn right on 79, you go through a rough part of Clarksville. It's where Jarrett used to deliver pizzas, more power to him. And uh, then you come to the end down there by McDonald's on, Red, on the Red River. And you don't go straight. You turn left to stay on 79. Like I said, man-made roads are stupid. And then you go what's called Press Street, but you're still on 79 for about two miles. And then you go finally turn north on Wilma Rudolph Boulevard, and you're actually going the direction that the map says you should be. <laughs> and then you can take 79 north all the way up if you want to. So we find when we get on this highway, don't expect every inch of it to be good. You know, you get out there toward Olmstead, Kentucky, it's kind of back like where 79 used to be here, and you get behind a combine, you're just going to be there. Because you know what? It goes back to two lanes, and you're there, stuck behind the woman going to get her weekly groceries. And you know what that requires? Patience. Bless Cumberland City's heart. My mama drove to two years before she died. And, I mean, you talk about living grace. That was living grace, right? So we find it's not going to be a four-laner all the way. It's going to get slow. You may get behind a combine. You may be getting behind the Amish wagon. Just keep going. Just keep going. Stay on the highway. Stay going in the direction that you ought to go as God's people. And that's where he wants us to be. Now, this is not real popular among Baptists. But notice how it's described midway of verse 8. The way of holiness. You know, I just told you that there was different names to 79 Highway. You know what it's called when it runs through Dover, or at least right through town? Donaldson Parkway. You know where it stops being called Donaldson Parkway? Once you cross the river. And then we're back to 79 Highway. North going east. <laughs> Right? But the Lord's highway is not like that. It's called the way of holiness from the beginning to the end. 
from when the Lord saves us till we arrive safely at home. It's the way of holiness. God's people has always been and always will be a holy-minded people. They will pray the things of God and not of this world. You know, when I was a young preacher, it would kind of stress me out that people didn't desire holy living. It don't distress me anymore because you know what? God's people will. It, it, it's just like salvation. I can't impute that to anybody. I would if I could. The Catholic Church just teaches that you can, but you can't. So you know what? Just let God do it. They'll stay on the highway. If they belong to him, they'll enjoy the way of holiness just as much as we do. So don't stress about it. Don't be upset. Don't, don't uh, get any sleepless nights over it because it leads in holiness. It always has. It always will be. Notice the rest of that verse. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err their end. Is 79 the only way to Clarksville? Absolutely not. There's other ways to get there, is there not? Now this sounds crazy, and most of you probably don't know it. Uh, you can go to Clarksville through Erin. Now you're stupid if you do it, but if you want to do it, there's another way, right? Now, it's not the right way. It's not the way that God would have us to do it. But you can come out of here, turn right on, uh, on the first street up here, Nat Core Drive, take that down to 49 Highway. It will be to stop in front of the middle school and turn right, and that's 49 Highway. Now, like the stupidity of man's kind, when you get to Gray's Crossing, you have to turn left to stay on 49 <laughs> And then you go through the little town of Erin. Watch out, you get a speeding ticket. And then the second four-way stop, you turn left on Highway 13. And that'll take you to Clarksville. Now, Jared knows the highway well. It is long, it is narrow. You talk about a combine, not only is it gonna slow you down, you're gonna have to pull off, right? But you will get there. But is that the way of the Lord for you? See, God's highway is different. God's way is different, and it always has been. It's straight. You know another problem with 49 Highway going south through Carlisle? You're back to this. It's a dangerous highway. When you get on 13, it's like this. Hill after hill after limestone hill. And you can't see very far ahead. You can't pass. See, the way of righteousness, the way of holiness, as it's put here, is not love today, is it? They'd rather go through Aaron. <laughs> and so we see as the Lord's people that we need to stay on this highway, on the way of the Lord. Notice the promises of this. No lion shall be there, nor ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. So we find on the, on the holy way, there's less threats. Is it easy to live a holy life? Absolutely not. It's against every grain in this human body. But it's safe. It is safe. Last verse, and we're going to close. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. So going out to the desert is going to be rough. In the desert is going to be hard. Listen, church, uh, say, folks, we're in the desert. The spots of, of nourishment are few and far between. But when we get on the highway, that's a quick trip back. Now, if you were uh, 
I don't know if dumb is the right word, but if you went the way through Carlisle and Erin and back up 13 Highway to the Clarksville, there's a lot more dangers on the way. Those roads are narrow, the hills are steep, the curves are rough, <laughs> but the way back is really, really good. <laughs> and so we find then that he makes them a rich promise that, yeah, I'll take you back to Israel. It's gonna be a while, but you're gonna go on a quick highway. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. That is the king's highway. Where are you at this morning? You sad, you got the muddy drummies? Stay on the highway. You glad? Get gladder. Because you know what? Somewhere in this desert, there's going to be a pretty flower. There's going to be a good place to drink some cold water. Just keep going.